Hey guys, this is Dave with Audio Win, and I have two sets of TWS earphones by Moondrop. I've got the very budget-friendly Moondrop block, and I also have the Ultrasonic, which does cost a little bit more, but it's still under a hundred bucks. Now, of course, since I'm reviewing two different sets, I need to do more of an abbreviated review of each set. So I may not be able to get to everything, but I will try and cover at least all the main features. But I want the focus, of course, to be primarily on their sound performance. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So let's go ahead and start with the block. So this is priced at 20 bucks. So that's that's pretty cheap. And it is a flathead style or an earbud style TWS. So it's not going to go in your ears, but it's just gonna hang on the outside or rest just outside of your ear canal. And this does use a single 13 millimeter I guess they call it a bass enhanced dynamic driver. Now, even though this is an ultra budget set, it does have some pretty good features. It does have Bluetooth 5.4. It's got the touch operation capabilities. It has low latency game mode. It'll give you about six hours of playback time. And then of course the case will give you about uh, 15 more hours of playback time. Now, as far as the, the sound on the website, it, states that they tuned this to their VDSF target, which kind of falls within that neutral category. And when I first sat down with these, my overall first impression or the characteristic that kind of stood out to me the most about its presentation was that the sound was warm. And while I would say the vocals and instruments had enough energy as to avoid maybe getting completely buried in the mix. I did still feel like they could have used a little more energy because I didn't feel like they were as upfront and center as I would have preferred. Now, I do need to acknowledge that I'm fully aware that this is a flathead style TWS and it's targeting maybe a, a little bit of a different type of consumer, most likely someone who prefers to feel maybe less isolated or cut off from their environment or just prefers not to put things in their ears. All that said, in my personal experience, the typical flathead style earphone often may, not always, but often may have certain acoustic challenges it has to overcome in order to achieve what I feel is decent sound performance. And the block is no exception. And again, we are talking 20 bucks. So I think it's only reasonable to kind of set our expectations accordingly. And where I'm picking up on some of the block's limitations are in its extension and that's on both ends. So I'm getting a little bass extension, but not nearly as much as I would like. So the bass presentation is definitely more mid bass focused and that's likely the reason its presentation leans warm. And then on the top end, I, again, I am getting a little bit of treble extension, but it's not a lot. And I don't know if I would outright categorize this as dark, but I can see how it could be considered kind of a dark sound. So it's extension in both directions is pretty limited. Now, things I think it does pretty well for this having this flat head style design are that it does have pretty good mid-range clarity and that mid-bass energy does bring a nice sense of richness to its presentation. Now, it may not be the most natural sounding set, but it is definitely natural enough. And if I'm just out and about on a walk or running some errands, this is easily going to give me 
good enough sound quality to get by, whether I'm using it to watch movies, listen to a podcast, or again, even music. I do think when you factor in all of its features, plus the fact that this does allow the user to stay more aware of their surroundings and not have to feel maybe completely isolated from their environment. And that's all for 20 bucks. So I do think this is a solid product. Now for me personally, I'm more likely to opt for the space travel for a few more bucks because its sound quality, in my opinion, is an improvement over the block. And it also brings some additional features to the table as well, including compatibility with the Moondrop Link app. But again, I do believe for 20 bucks that the block is a solid product. Okay, next we have the Moondrop Ultrasonic, which is also a TWS, but this is the in-ear style earphone. And I would love to show you what the main case looks like, but for the life of me, I cannot remove the cover. So just know that once you put this cover on, it's very unlikely that you will be able to remove it. All that said, the design, and you can kind of see it through the cover here, but it's actually pretty cool. And the cover's nice too. Plus the cover does add this locking lid, which does prevent the earphones from falling out, which that's great. Now I do need to get to the sound quickly, but I will go ahead and cover just some of the basic features and specs, at least the ones that I think might be pertinent to the review. So this has most of the basic functions that you would expect from a Moondrop TWS. It's compatible with the Moondrop Link app, which that will give you access to the different, I think it's five different tuning profiles. It has pretty decent active noise canceling. It's not the best, but it's okay. It has low latency gaming mode, which that works great. It supports all of your basic Bluetooth codecs like SBC, AAC, uh, LC3, but it also supports LDAC as well, which you do have to activate that in the Moondrop Link app. So there is maybe an extra step involved, but it's a very simple process. And as far as the battery life, it gives you approximately six hours of playback time with each charge. And then the charging case gives you an additional three full charges, which is approximately, I think, 18 hours total of playback time. And then of course it has all of your basic call functionality and features, which means it does have a microphone. And I would say that as far as connectivity for both calls and just for listening to music, it's been extremely reliable. And as far as the microphone quality, I wouldn't call it amazing, but it's certainly what I would consider good quality and for sure perfectly adequate for everyday usage. Now, finally, of course, it does also have touch features which can be customized within the Moondrop Link app. And I did mess with that and it was pretty straightforward, easy to set up. And then once I got everything set up the way I like it, everything worked perfectly fine. The earphones seemed to respond pretty accurately to the different touch patterns. Now, in regards to the sound performance, so this actually does have two different drivers. So it's a hybrid setup. It has one BA and then one dynamic driver. And again, there are five different sound profiles to choose from. You've got monitor, reference, club, 89XX, and then one called 336XX. 33XX having a very bassy V-shaped sound, which I didn't really care for. And then the 89XX, which still had a bassier presentation, albeit more sub bass focused, but it also had quite a bit of extra mid energy as well. And I didn't care for that one very much either. I think club reference and monitor were the three most natural sounding to me. And basically their tuning was the same in the upper mids and treble, but they had different bass levels. Club having the most bass, monitor having the least amount of bass, and then the reference setting landed kind of right between the two, right in the middle. And I liked both club and reference the best, but for my testing, I spent most of my time with club since that was the default profile. So the bass presentation in club mode is more sub bass focused, and there is a little bit of a recession in the low mids and mid bass. I guess kind of a bass tuck right there, similar to what I experienced with the Golden Ages, but it's actually even more exaggerated. And 
what that does is it does make things sound a little bit sucked out right there in that area and maybe cause it to lack a little bit as far as the note weight with the instruments and also maybe some richness in some male vocals and in addition, I do wish there was a little more mid bass thump as well. All that said, the bass is clean and I do think it has good low mid detail and good mid bass texture for this price point. And it also has good sub bass extension as well. So you do have a nice amount of that sub bass rumble. Now, the mid range is where things start to deviate a little as far as my tuning preference, because again, there is that dip in the lower mids, which can contribute to vocals and some instruments sounding a little bit thin and even a little unnatural. However, I do think they did a decent job with the penna as far as the amount of energy. Although I do wish maybe there was a little bit more, maybe a little more energy in the vocals. Not that I feel like they're getting buried in the mix necessarily. I just, again, I wish there was a little more energy in the vocals. Now in regards to the treble, I do like the tuning approach they took as far as treble levels and finding a good balance between keeping things pretty smooth, but also making sure that cymbals have good energy and sound fairly natural. However, I did notice that the treble detail was just about average for this price point. And I kind of got the same impression with its technical performance as well in general, because while I do feel like it's acceptable, given the fact that it's just a TWS and it's under $100, I don't think it offered much beyond that. Its technical performance is just what I would consider to be good for what this is. And as far as the soundstage, it had probably about average width for an IM, but its forward presentation was a little more on the intimate side. So it didn't give me much in terms of that forward depth and layering. And while it didn't give me much in terms of instrument layering, it did do a good job with the left to right instrument positional cues or the instrument placement. So you can tell where each instrument falls from left to right within the sound field. Now, as you can see, I also have the golden ages and the space travel out here on my desk. And if you've seen my reviews of these, you'll know that I actually prefer the stock sound of the space travel over any of the available pro files for the golden ages, although I do feel like the golden ages does bring maybe a little better technical performance to the table, but in the end, I just preferred the overall tuning of the space travel. And I have to say, I'm feeling kind of the same way about the ultrasonic as well. And I think the reason is mostly because of the bottom half of its tuning. I do think the ultrasonic brings more to the table in terms of detail and just its general technical performance. However, I am finding myself being, again, a little more drawn to the space travels base and lower mids and lower mid range tuning. So basically everything below 1K. It just sounds a little more natural to me with the space travel. Now, I will say I do think the upper mids and treble with the ultrasonic are tuned nicely. And for the most part, they sound good. And again, bring along with it pretty solid technical performance as well. But I'm just not quite connecting with it the way I am with the space travel. And no doubt there will absolutely be those of you who probably will love this and you'll be able to find that connection with the ultrasonic. And again, it does have the five different tuning profiles. And if you are looking for better technical performance, that might be another draw for some of you as well. Now, as far as whether I prefer it over the golden ages, I do feel like the golden ages does have better detail retrieval and maybe even better separation. And from a tuning perspective, I also feel like I'm connecting a little more with the golden ages over the ultrasonic, but of the three between the ultrasonic, the space travel and the golden ages, I'm actually still finding myself connecting the most with the space travel. And it also gives you the best value proposition. And while it doesn't offer much in terms of technical performance, I am finding myself having a, a little bit of a stronger connection again with it over both the ultrasonic or golden ages. Okay, so that concludes this review. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. If you like my content, please take a second and hit that subscribe button also. 
If you would please comment on this video, please like this video, please share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you.